In the aftermath of the failed Operation Eagle Claw, Richard Marsenko created the now world-famous unit called SEAL Team 6. Gee, we know about them. creating the newest SEAL Team, the United States and Soviet Union were locked in the Cold War and spies were everywhere. The Navy wanted to pinpoint their areas of greatest vulnerability, aiming to identify strategic points where they were most exposed. Even in spots they thought were locked up tight, they were really keen to find out if there were any sneaky ways in. So Admiral James Lyons asked Marsenko to put together a whole new team. Four years later, Red Cell came into existence when Richard Marsenko handed over control of SEAL Team 6 to come. This is a bit off topic, guys, but there's a game called Splinter Cell back in the day. It's like um, a kind of like a military kind of spy uh, game. Comment below if this cell, Red Cell team is anything linked to the game Splinter Cell. I'm actually very curious because it just hit me. Commander Robert Gormley. Marsenko established the Naval Security Coordination Team, OP-06D, commonly known as Red Cell, or Red Team, consisting of a 14-man unit. 13 were from SEAL Team 6, and one Force Recon Marine. The Red Cell members exposed the weak spots in military bases, pulling off stunts like using fake IDs, taking <laughs> down fences, locking down buildings, grabbing hostages, and snatching up high-ranking officers. You know what, I rate it because they are allowing themselves to show where their vulnerabilities are so they can fix it. So they actually got a team to be against themselves in a way. Which it's is good sick. because nothing is perfect. Yeah. Everything will have its flaw, but it's about identifying the flaw and how to make that flaw stronger. Yeah, moving forward. And you'll you'll rather it be the red cell team than an enemy country with a similar team who could do it without you know, you, you know I mean you'd rather it be your own and then you, you Yeah, fix and the it. main thing is identifying it as well. Yeah. The name Red Cell was a term for the opposing force, Op 4, in a war game by Western nations during the Cold War, a reference to the sea of red flags commonly associated with mm. communist nations. To maximize the educational value for the base commander and verify Red Cell's penetration claims, which were occasionally disputed by base commanders, a decision was made to integrate a video crew with low light equipment into the planning and execution of each mission. This posed a bit of a challenge as the video crew itself needed to infiltrate the base to stay in close proximity to Red Cell. To address this issue, three former SEAL Team 6 operators were enlisted to record every operation. This approach offered a dual advantage. Not only could these individuals covertly enter military installations without compromising Red Cell's cover, but having undergone identical training as Red Cell members, they could anticipate the team's actions, ensuring better video of everything going down. In 1985, the team snuck into a base and put fake explosives on no the roof way. of the command center, where da. more than a dozen admirals worked. A what few the weeks hell? later, they came back, took over the home of the base commanding officer, took hostages, and did pretend attacks on planes and docked ships. Red Cell did not mess about. So imagine that was an actual terrorist organization with these people working. They would have done them differently. Mm -hmm. They would have blown up that military base. The hostages would probably be dead now. Those planes would have been shot up. Like... Uh, but now this goes back to identifying the weak areas. So they're going to fix it. And how to fix it and make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, that's mad. Yeah. Not long after, the team discovered that security hadn't gotten any better at the Navy's nuclear submarine base. So they decided to do something about it. Red Cell members easily got into the base and casually walked onto a nuclear missile submarine during the day without any trouble. The what entire the hell? operations were recorded and later presented to base personnel for examination and analysis. This approach. Do you think people lost their jobs? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. You go sure to the it, sergeant that's leading it, thinking, "Why was this not? Why was this area not How covered?" How can you just get? Of in course, there, like their that. country's you know vulnerable. Yeah. 
speech aimed to not just embarrass the commanders, but also shed light on vulnerabilities that yeah. needed fixing. What you said. The top ranking Navy officials insisted there's no personal grudge with the unit, highlighting that the general take was in favor of Red Cell, while also acknowledging that Marsenko has a tendency to go overboard. Red it's Cell good. team members had to keep up their SEAL qualifications in diving, parachuting, and demolition. But apart from that, they pretty much had the freedom to do their own thing. Marsenko's leadership style for physical training was like that of other elite special ops units worldwide, like the British SAS. There weren't any set workout programs forced on them. Instead, members were just expected to train on their own and stay in good shape. According to Marsenko himself, he and his units spent a significant portion of their off-duty hours drinking and getting into fights. Damn. A tradition carried over from his time as the commander of SEAL Team 6. While this kind of behavior wasn't exclusive to Red Cell, the frequency and the various problems directly linked to drinking have often been criticized as a breakdown in discipline and leadership by officers in naval special warfare and other branches of the military. It would eventually catch up with Red Cell a few months later worsening the unit's already tarnished disciplinary reputation in the Navy. It might be said that this kind of behavior was possible because Red Cell wasn't closely watched during its brief time in operation. However, this is only partly true. While the unit's actions were closely monitored during training, there was essentially no overseeing authority for the team to report to during its off-duty hours. So really, they were just vibing, chilling. As long as they're kind of keeping up with general training in their own time, they didn't really have to do anything and just obviously work on these projects together when they needed to. Do you think it's more because they were more like a private unit? Yeah. Rather than officially under? Yeah, and the guy that's leading them Marcinko. didn't really care. He's like, a sick guy. He's just like, yeah, don't worry, like, don't worry. He just put the plans together to, like... Intra infiltrate when they needed to to yeah. show and then they're chilling they're vibing that's quite sick <laughs> but would they go out to war if needed i don't i i'm assuming if there a war broke out and they needed them they would probably the red cell will be paused i'm assuming comment below if you agree but with then agree. also they don't undergo proper training either they yeah, train but, in their own time yeah but they they will be brought in for because they the the people above them who mm. would call, call them will be assuming they've been training properly so they would be called in for war, I'm sure, if needed. But obviously, in the meantime, while they're not needed, they're more useful trying to infiltrate. Finding weak spots. Yeah, they're more useful for that. Yeah. So basically did its own thing without any rules. Admiral Lyons even came up with a thick set of guidelines to keep them in check. They also had a Navy lawyer on board to make sure everything stayed legal. Wow. Plus, Red Cell couldn't just choose any scenario and go for it there were some limits. Admiral Lyons threw in his own cautionary note, stray too far from the agreed path, and it's game over for them. Damn. Both the person in charge and the entire unit. These words would later turn out to be prophetic, but not before Red Cell had its time in the spotlight. On March 20th, 1986, uh -oh. as part of an exercise to address a base's defenses, Red Cell team members abducted Ronald D. Sheridan, a civilian security guard employed at Naval Weapons Station Seal Beach in Southern California. What happened to him was anything but typical, even for Red Cell. They brought him to a nearby hotel, where he endured 30 hours of brutal interrogation. He was pushed around, roughed up, and repeatedly submerged into a bathtub filled with water. Yo, they, that's extreme. So I think what's happened is they got a bit too Carried into away. this project where they started actually like, uh, I would assume what would have been what meant to happen is you abduct them, maybe you put them time up on the chair just to have him there. And then that's it, really. And then that's you kind it. Of, say this is what would have happened. happened. Yeah. And then you kind of record it. All. But they're interrogating they him. In bit, they're putting in bloody water. They went in. That's, yeah, they're getting shut down for this. This is probably what, how they end This up. is where the dark thoughts start yeah, coming yeah. out. And th that's why they were linking alcohol. Yes. 
because they are un- most likely under the influence of alcohol as well. Yeah. And that's when your dark thoughts start coming out. But that's a bit extreme. It's and dangerous. Flushing toilet. Ah, the head and toilet. Capturing him might look like a vulnerability, but in reality, putting this guy through pain didn't yeah, have any mad. meaningful purpose. No. He started shouting, concerned about a possible broken rib. Then they asked him to confirm his identity. Afterward, he was left on the bedroom floor as most of the Red Cell members left. The remaining men apologized to Sheridan, saying that it wasn't meant to go this far. Sheridan underwent a year of physical therapy. As he Duh. wasn't part of the naval personnel, he took legal action Obviously. against the government by filing a $6 million yeah. lawsuit. The procedures for conducting the team's exercises were made stricter after the incident. And the team's act. Oh, they didn't get closed for that. They, they, I'll be sh- I'm surprised. They should have been shut down. down. Yeah, same. I'm very shocked. I thought that would be the end. Actions were investigated. On January 24th, 1990, Marsenko was found guilty of conspiring to defraud the government, leading to a 21 month imprisonment in federal prison and a fine of $10,000. Marsenko claims, however, that this was just a trick and that the government felt embarrassed about the problems Red Cell exposed in the US military. Still, he served his prison time and paid the fine. Red Cell was disbanded in 1992. They got too inner on their job. They got, they got too, too excited with away. the role. They started saying, nah, this is, let's do that. This is real now, basically. That's insane. That is crazy. The thing is, the purpose was good. Trying to find the weak spots in terms of what was currently there. And then, you know, you're flagging up how we can improve this. But from the moment you're actually assaulting yeah, the person you abducted, who is from your own country, your own team. You're wow. doing too much. I'm they telling serve. you, their dark thoughts started coming out. Yeah, they yeah they I like them. doing this. I like her. You know, it's a yeah. bit weird. It's scary. And people, once they start, sometimes it's... It's sad hard to stop. yeah poor guy who was a victim to it six he's million, traumatized yeah six million probably ain't even i would never want to work in that environment again in my life never yeah. and that's would i want to work again i don't know that's why he took a legal action and so six sad. million ain't even enough to pay for what he went through but guys thank you so much for recommending the video that team is insane uh don't forget to like and subscribe for now peace out bye